So I have a question. We're in the midst of a pandemic. People are becoming sick around us. Some people are dying. We're also in the midst of some very significant anti-racism conversations in our country, which while not new, have become part of the national conversation in a new way in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder. So this might seem like an odd question, but you know, with all of this around us, should we be happy when it can feel like there are really significant and weighty things that merit our attention? What role does happiness play in these conversations? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, it's worth recognizing that overall happiness, you know, this idea of feeling satisfied with your life, having positive emotions there, none of those imply that you have to have the absence of negative emotions, right? None of these imply that you can't feel sad or angry, right? You know, in, during a national pandemic, when faced with racial injustice, like the right emotions, the normative response is to be upset, it's to be sad, it's to be anxious, it's to be angry, right? We would not be being human if we didn't feel those negative emotions right now. And those negative emotions are important. In fact, it's really important to make space for those negative emotions. You can kind of let them play out. That said, I think that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not also feeling joy at times, mm -hmm. that we're not also taking time to savor the things that are going well or savor the things that we do value. And the reason again, you know, is that happiness matters, right? You know, if we want creative solutions to the problems we're facing in a pandemic, to the problems of racial violence, or even just to like, you know, how to navigate this tough time personally and in our families, right? We need to be happy. The data suggests that happiness yields creative solutions. It yields a sort of resilience that we need during this tough time. And so I actually think it's more important than ever when things get tough to double down on these sort of healthy habits. And again, the reason is that it provides the sort of resilience we need to fight the tough stuff. That doesn't mean that we're also not, you know, mourning when things are bad. That doesn't mean, you know, being Pollyannish and pretending like, you know, the murders that we're seeing of black people by police officers are okay. No, right? We can be fighting for justice. We can be angry about the things that deserve our anger while at the same time still noticing, you know, that, you know, the morning coffee is warm and that that feels nice and my spouse's smile is beautiful and I'm happy that they're here. And we're lucky, you know, to be alive in the midst of a global pandemic, honestly, right? So you can have the gratitude, you can have the joy, and that can actually live alongside some of the appropriate negative emotions that we're supposed to feel during challenging times. Yeah, and something that you named I think, that I think is really important for youth in particular is when we, when we foster these healthy habits, it allows for our creativity to come to the fore and allows us to get into a different brain space uh, from which we can minister to these negative situations more effectively and um, channel our, our, the harder, deeper, more gritty feelings um, in a way that's positive, that doesn't act change. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think also, you know, it's also helpful to have techniques to kind of get through those negative emotions, right? Because you want to experience them, you don't want to be destroyed by them, right? You want to kind of have them in the appropriate amount and to sort of use them effectively. Um, and one technique for that, that, you know, we teach about in my class is, you know, a set of meditation practices that allow you to be with your negative emotions. Um, one of my favorite, which has um, been popularized a lot by the meditation teacher, Tara Brock, um, is a meditation practice called RAIN, um, which is an acronym for recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture. And so the idea is, you know, when you are you know, like, you know, looking at the scary COVID statistics and you experience some anxiety or uncertainty about what's going to happen, say, in the next school year or something, the idea is you stop and you recognize, you know, what well, we often tell kids to label their emotions. Like this is, you know, as an adult or, you know, as, as someone you're working with, label your emotion. Ah, that's anxiety. That's uncertainty. That's frustration, right? And then you do the A, which is allowing. You say, I'm just gonna let this emotion be there just as it is, right? You know, it's like some neighbor who comes over that's not your favorite person, but you're not gonna kick them out, right? It's like, all right, I'm just gonna allow. Do that with your emotion. You say, all right, we're gonna just hang out for a couple minutes. And then you do the investigate, um, which is how you get through it. You sort of, with care and compassion, sort of try to pay attention to what the emotion feels like. What happens when you're anxious or frustrated or angry? Like well, my chest is getting tight. Like I'm watching my, you know, my, my jaw is kind of more clenched than usual. Or I've, I have these cravings, you know, when I watch my negative emotions, sometimes I watch myself want to get distracted. Like I'm craving jumping to social media or I'm craving eating something. I just want to get away from it, right? Like be there with it and sit. Emotions are like a wave that are going to pass. 
And if you sit there and pay attention, you know, it kind of passes more quickly. And then you get to the end, which is to nurture, which is, you know, how you would talk to someone you really cared about who is going through that emotion. What can you do for yourself? Again, not running away from it or distracting yourself or, you know, eating tubs of ice cream, right? Like what would be the nutritious nurturing thing to do? You know, sometimes it's like hug yourself, you know, or like, you know, put your hand on your chest or give yourself a kind of nurturing gesture. Um, lots of things you can do to kind of feel better. This practice of RAIN, the data suggests, can allow us to make it through emotions, but also in a way that doesn't again, destroy us or burn us out.